All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to CADCast episode number 777. I'm your host, GBD, here in Long Island, New York. And as always, we are joined by the real Fortnite OG, Wombat. That's right. Even though I didn't start playing until chapter two, I'm totally OG. That's close That's enough. I read books as well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Wait, what? Let's say that again. I'm sorry. I, I read all the Fortnite books, I think. Is <laughs> oh, oh. No, that's how you, you start in chapter two of books, too. Yes, oh. I start books in chapter two. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> that's me. You stepped on your yeah. joke. Uh-huh. That's all right. It's all right. We're doing this live. Mm-hmm. Yes, welcome to the show. For the first time ever, we are streaming across multiple platforms because now I guess Twitch is feeling the heat. And from, I guess, from Kick, I don't know. That's like the new streaming platform that's like stolen a bunch of high profile streamers. So they now let partners stream, uh, do multi streams. So we're doing it. Look at us. You can watch us. So now you can watch us on Twitch or you can watch us on YouTube on either the GPD channel or the CADcast channel. Two of everybody's favorite channels, really. Like, Yeah. What about um, on Kick? Have they bought us yet? (laughs) I'm waiting. We have to do gambling. All gambling. All gambling. Okay. Yeah. That's the people who, the people who own Kick own an online gambling empire. And so that's, why kick exists really to promote gambling i think gotcha so what are we placing bets on (laughs) that they don't make us any offer whatsoever i would i would definitely take that bet (laughs) that they do not anyway so we're there we're even on we're on x even did you even know you could live stream i because you could i paid for this i didn't think jews were allowed on that site after (laughs) what the owner of that site said today i didn't know what did he say today i don't even know Oh, it, someone posted this like whole manifesto on why Jews are awful, uh-huh. and he quote tweeted it and said everything this guy says here is right. And it, it was what's like, one thing on. that he said about Jews? I, I, I now you're gonna make me pull up the well, stupid. I uh, the just want Discord. to make sure that you're. No, it's in the Discord. Being fair. I, it's in the Discord. I'll pull it up. I mean, I don't uh, need to really know. No, real. no, no. You you asked. Uh. uh I, I feel see. bad thinking about Elon at all or talking about Elon. That's what he wants. He lives off of that. And now it's just Jewish been communities so have been pushing <laughs> the exact kind of dialectical hatred against whites that they claim to want to stop using against them. Uh, this is all sorts of weird nonsense, anti-Semitic nonsense. It's like this whole paragraph by this guy. I'm not reading more of it. Oh. And then Elon Musk quote it, re- replied to the guy saying, you have said the actual truth. He's probably not even listening. He's just thinking about himself in his head. I don't know. His I head just, is just uh, me, 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 me. So he's like, yeah, yeah, asked, I agree. And he, he did it and uh, yeah, he sucks. So my neighbor, my neighbor who has become my friend. Mm-hmm. Told, told me the other day that he like really likes Elon. And it was like hard to not. I mean, I, I did try to give him many reasons why not to. Mm-hmm. But it's hard because when t- somebody tells you that they like something or someone, they're not really necessarily looking to hear why they're wrong. You know? Oh, Especially, is that how Yeah, it yeah. They don't like that. Okay. Yeah, I'm don't... not sure if you knew that, but they don't. People generally, unless the person is like really relaxed and open-minded and just You know like, who gets a bum rap? Mussolini. <laughs> I don't think, yeah, he's going to go that far. Well, I mean, so basically <laughs> every time I read something jerky that Elon does, I want to send it to, to my friend. It's probably not the right move. I, I don't. So I do not send that's, it. That's the yeah. correct move. I think about it and I'm like, is this a smart guy? I mean, he's friends with you. So that's like, <laughs> it's a give or take here. So is this a smart guy? Yes. He's a smart guy and he's a creative guy. I think, I tend to think that the people who are smart and like things that I don't are just misinformed. Just, or yeah, like, I was going to say, he may learn it on his own. Right. Like he's, he's busy. My guess is like, he's just like a, a lot busier than I am. I have a lot more time to like, everyone is a lot busier than you are to research, to re- <laughs> thank you to research, you know, just to read shit. Like, and he's busy, like doing stuff. So he's just, was this person at your birthday party? 
I don't want to get, get too many details. So yeah, I know who it is. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway. So I don't uh, know, it's not like I'm gonna be like, oh, I don't even know his name, so it doesn't matter. Perfect. Everybody yes. wins. I, I there's Everybody a wins. I, I don't know. There's still a line there too where like you can talk to people and you can like understand that they are like all in on like Tesla or any of his other like businesses. He, he has a Twitter. Tesla. He has a Tesla. Yeah. Yeah. Like I get the like, hey, I'm into Tesla or like uh space rockets. Like I get that portion of like, oh, I think yes. like it's that admirable is, what he's doing. Yes, and, and that's every, how like, he feels. Okay. Like I get that sense of it and then at that point it's not worth it just to like rain on their parade like that this is just a horrible human being on a human being <laughs> sense right rather than like the some of the stuff that he's like building and contributing to like that's a lot of people working on that right and and some of them have good goals of course and like say what you will about his products like some people like them um you saw about different... like the, all the people getting hurt at spacex like there's like 600 people who are who are like hurt at, at spacex and that's like a, the accident rate is like six times i don't know that you should look up the the truth because i don't i'm just i forget what the number was but it was something like six times higher than like other you know other places space like that. other space companies i don't know what you call <laughs> Sp is space company a real term i don't know um but it was something crazy like that and when people complained about it, when the employees complained they got fired or they were told that it was for the good of humanity so if you lost a finger or two it was everything for, for humanity right not, yeah, not yeah, for, yeah not for we've, we've is, talked is, about how big yes. he is on humanity okay let's let's <laughs> change the subject also teslas aren't great I don't know. Have you ever ridden in a Tesla? I don't know if I have, to be honest. The, the I think door I did one time. I have you ever like time. opened a door of a Tesla? Even uh -huh. the door handle is dumb. Mm -hmm. Like they're flush to the door. You have to like push in, and then the handle pops out on the other side, and then you have to grab that. Like, don't worry. In in, in about two years, it's we'll kind of like find opening out. up a microwave, the type that like have the little press button. <laughs> yeah. From nineteen eighty six, you mean that yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, the microwave. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you know the microwaves. Remember when they? Yeah. What was the regular door handles on cars? Fine. Like there was not no problem there. So much aerodynamic, much more aerodynamic. Oh yeah. It has to must save uh, countless pennies every year. Anyway. Yeah. It's enough. One that you're right. Don't That's get me. Enough. Don't get me started. Didn't you did, do did something you more the, exciting? Sorry. On, on the truck though. Did you yes. see the picture of the cyber truck? Yes. Yeah, the cyber truck bicycle sucks. in the back of it. Wait, what? Yes. The what? The what? They're, the, there's Someone some... put a bicycle in the bag. <laughs> Wait, he's <laughs> laughing. Look at the picture of it. it it's it on the fit. Discord. I, it that's also fit. on the tag Discord. I okay, know. I saw Hold that on. picture. It doesn't fit an entire just bicycle, like a like a mountain what? bike. Cyber truck bicycle. Yeah. About the reason. Okay. Reddit. Here it is. Hold it's, on, it's I'm looking. It's fantastic. Like it fits oh, like half a bicycle it. in the back. Well, oh, it's oh man. I can't <laughs> see it. Hey, news. How, okay, here it is. How big is it actually? Oh my God, what? <laughs> it doesn't even fit it. It's hanging out. It's just hanging out the back of the truck. It's so good. <sighs> and yet it still takes up like two parking spots somehow. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Next on his list is a, is a bike that folds in half <laughs> that can fit in the back of the it's, truck. We'll throw one in with every Tesla. Problem solved. <laughs> oh my God. All right, that's enough. It's enough Musk. <laughs> Tell me about the event you went to, GB. I went to the Elon Musk uh, Dinner Don't of Champions. You dare. <laughs> <laughs> I went for the Elon Musk Night of Excellence. Outstanding excellence. I mean, no. if a douchebag like that was going to hold an award show, you would definitely be invited. <laughs> wait, what does that mean? <laughs> wait. <laughs> um, no, I went to the annual ctf gala you remember ctf the children's tumor foundation we yeah, did same. some mm -hmm. we did a bunch of stuff on the show raising money for them um so we got invited to not because we did the thing on twitch but because we're friends with uh somebody who's deeply involved with ctf he invited us to the gala and sat at his table uh and so we did it and i wore a suit for the first time in seven years i looked it up um uh, what didn't really fit anymore because of orange theory. I gotta say, like, 
I got pumped up from Orange Theory so much that I went up a size and a half in my dress shirt. I went from a 15 and a half to a 17 just from these muscles that are exploding. No, I don't know. Just because I have like some muscles now as opposed to no muscles. Um, and uh, it was a very at a very fancy place called the Gotham Hall, I think. It was like an old bank from the 20s. Batman's house? Was Batman's house a bank? Wayne Wayne Manor. Is Wayne, the bank? Wayne Manor? You said Gotham Hall. I'm like, oh, it's no, Batman's house. No, no, it's not Batman's house. Arkham Asylum. It's a it's a bank from the 20s that's a freestanding building in the middle, you know, right by Macy's, which is a the very zoo weird where site. Penguin lives. It looks like they could have filmed maybe oh, like Batman I know where Returns. That is. I know what you're talking about. I, I've, I've it looks very out before. of place in Manhattan. It's cool. In it's a modern. cool building, though. And inside is even cooler, like, because all they do now is throw events there. So they had the CTF event there, and I've never been to anything like this. And one of the things that they do at the event was, of course, they have people come up on stage and who are the big donors uh, who talk about their, you know, their family members who are affected by uh, NF. And one of them was the guy who owns the Cleveland Cavaliers. Um, Dan Gilbert. Dan Gilbert. And, you know, it's very moving. I had a lot of tears uh, throughout the evening, but at towards the end of the evening, they have an auction and they give you, when you come in, they give you like a num- an auction flag basically that you can hold mm-hmm. up. A paddle? A pad- not, it was just like on the back of your program basically. So, but this auction is, they're not actually auctioning anything. They are just auctioning, they say, okay, who's gonna donate a half a million dollars? And then a half a million dollars, will do this basically and people hold up their sign for half a million dollars and then they do that they just drop the number like by half like every and then they just do that for like a half an hour and then they raise like a couple million dollars that way it was pretty wild i've never seen like people but no one gets anything it's not like no, half no. a million dollars and you get like dinner with it's Hugh not- Jackman or something like that it's an auction in only that they're accepting money and that you're <laughs> donating it to charity. It's, That's really weird. It I'm was, not, it was very weird, they, but yet very effective and made everything move quickly because they don't have to explain it. There's no bidding war. It's not a bid. It's not an auction, I guess, because you're not outbidding anybody. They're just like, okay, who's in for half a million? Who's in for a quarter million? Who's in for a hundred thousand? Who's in for... What were you in for? A thousand. Oh, well, that's fair. Yeah. And then we caught the like the late train home. Mm. Um, Everybody had already left by the time they got done to those numbers. No, 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 no. <laughs> but no, they raised I, I, they raised like two point seven million or something like that just from the from the from the gala. And I looked up Michael J. Fox had a gala too, and your your boy Jason Isbell uh, performed at the gala at the Michael J. Fox Parkinson's gala. Where do you know about this? You don't see I'm gala telling. or gala? It's gala, at least according to because because Mrs. Chief, he kept correcting me, thinking I'm just you know trying to be silly and trying to work gay into something. But I, according to Ale- Alexa, says uh, gala. Oh, of that if, if Alexa says it. I mean, I feel like she's very. Hey Alexa, it. is it gala or gala? That's not gonna work. Gala, see, she said gala. Yep, yep. And now she's given the definition. Yeah, yeah. It just told me that a gala is an apple. Oh, stop! I I had to tell me it was the the right the right definition. Anyway, it was a lovely night. Oh, so I was saying, Jason Isbell performed Johnny Be Good at the Michael J. Fox Parkinson's. I mean, uh, Parkinson's oh, gala. That's fun. And they raised like $5 million. So maybe next year he can come to the CTF one. He looks very good and very nice with his new teeth. He's, I will let him know. He seems let to be enjoying know. them on X. Yeah, I think he, I think he <laughs> looks... So wrong. I, I think he looks fantastic. And I mean that sincerely. If you want to let him know, that's fine. He doesn't fine. care. What do you think? I, I, I know he doesn't care what I think. I'm just saying... He looks great with his I like him better with rotted teeth. Can you please let him know that I like to him have a nice rotted mouth? It could not have been easy 
to get that done for anybody because he had to get basically everything replaced and I'm sure it was incredibly painful. So I'm giving credit where credit is due because I'm I, sure it was I, neither. His dentist. Appreci- appreciate that. Yeah, I'll, yeah. His dentist deserves I'll, the credit. I'll let him know or or not. I don't know. <laughs> or not. not it doesn't not. matter. One what, what of the two uh, <laughs> will definitely happen. But wait, I understand. Is it controversial to like his new teeth? I'm, I'm not quite... Are people against I, it? I don't. I'm I, sure there's people against it because he's a controver- controversial. He tweets too much. Person on the. He doesn't tweet too much. I wouldn't say that. Um, How he does he reconcile with with um, providing content for Elon? He can't be a fan of Elon. He may not. He can't be feel good about providing content for Elon's platform. I, I, it's it's a platform. But he can right? he can he does get to spread his message on there of correct his fun message, yes. dunking on dunking on annoying people. He's really good at it too. It would be a shame to give it up, you know? Right. Right. He, he enjoys it. Right. Um, and he's good oh, at yeah, it. That's good. the key. He's, he's very good at it. Not Apparently as, you know. he's, he's good in that movie too. I haven't seen it yet, but no, it should be on, uh, was it, is it, it's going to be on Apple TV. Apple. Yeah. 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 It, I'm it's going to be that. on there soon. If it's not there already. Yes. Looking, yeah. looking forward to watching that. Yes. Yes. You got blue beetle though on Friday. Same, pretty much the same type of movie, mm-hmm. right? You know, Scorsese, Blue Beetle, in the shipwreck household. Yep. I don't. No, I, nobody uh, wants do that. You know, do you know how many DC movies they've watched? And probably none. Right? None. None. That's the right none. number. <laughs> they, I know. They, they have, have never no like. They have never seen a trailer for one and gotten <laughs> excited and the least. The only good right. one is the Batman, and that one isn't even part of the other ones. And it wasn't even good. Yes, the Batman is very good. I mean, it's very good. I stand by that. I enjoy that. The movie. kids would probably enjoy some of the animated. No, the ones. kids won't like it. It's no, not for children. The animated ones, maybe they got to be one that's mm. a couple that are for their you age know what? appropriate. They would like just just Teen Titans Go. Just stay stick with that. They they watch that enough, and they I don't know. They're on from that. They've they've grown out of their DC phase for the most part. <laughs> like the rest of the world. <laughs> Should we do uh, some show feedback? Yeah, sure. let's do it. Okay. Uh, Joe one nine nine one two. These are all from YouTube this week. Uh, mm. Ship's extra camera is great. Use it like in the office to break the fourth wall and give us side commentary. <laughs> He's just gonna stare at it. I think mm-hmm. that's the move. Yes, good there's job. no mic on that camera. Oh, okay. Uh, Ryan Bartley three one five two said he, that he watched career opportunities based on my recommendation. I don't know if it was so much of a recommendation as much as it was just a reference. <laughs> but I think anytime anybody brings up career opportunities, it's it's yeah. a recommendation to it's, watch it's career a, opportunities. It's, it's recommendations. <laughs> There are some very important uh, things in that movie. Yeah. <laughs> two, two of them? Two. Two very, two important, very important Who's things. in that movie? Oh, Jennifer, Jennifer Connelly. Jennifer, Jennifer yeah. Connelly. Got it. Mm-hmm. And the guy. Yeah, Frank Whaley. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's his name. Yep. Uh, Jiro Trom had to say, been a while since I've watched you guys on YouTube. Great job, Wombat. Looking slimmer. Glad you are getting healthy. We do it for our kiddos. Uh, tomorrow should be, I believe, my 30th uh, Orange Theory class. Nice. Mm-hmm. Nice. It was either Monday and I didn't notice or it's tomorrow. So I forgot. I you can look in the up. app. I know. I'm saying it I need to look it, it up. Counts it right. I, for- I forgot which one it is, but uh, 30th class. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I got a text message from my local orange theory uh asking me if i wanted to uh get a discount on upgrading my membership to unlimited classes Mm -hmm. how much was the discount it's like twenty dollars off a month from the normal price and i'm sort of debating it (laughs) oh how much what does that come out to it's still a lot it's It's like like 120 or something no if there was only 120 i would do it yeah i pay more than that for what i have now it's like 180 still but I think you should do it. I w- it's not a question of want or does not. Does the math wants. work out if you do three times a week? Does the math it, it, the, it if I do three itself? times? A, yeah, it pays for itself. If that and that's just it is that's the conversation we had is that I would love to be able to do three classes a week. That's that's sort of like the magic two. number, like when you mm-hmm. really see changes. I know. Hard. If I could do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, that would be very nice. Mm, I agree. Mm-hmm. 
Do it, Wombat. So, yep. Yep. It's not lack of, of wanting. And, uh, and, and also for the this week, for the first time since I pulled, uh, basically tore all the ligaments in my right shoulder, which was back in May, mm. uh, I have movement again in my right arm. Nice. That's good. <laughs> and I th- And I actually think that has a lot to do with Orange Theory as well. Using it. Yes, the exercise, the arm exercises. That's cool. So, mm-hmm. I couldn't do this last week. You couldn't. Last week, I couldn't do this. He's masturbating furiously right now. By exactly. The way, if you're not watching, I have to make up live. for lost time. Yeah. <laughs> so that's Excellent. it. That's all I got. Okay. Yes. Good job. I, I, every time I go to Orange Theory now, I think about you. Wow. I'm uh, sorry. When I'm on the rower, killing it. Mm-hmm. I said, I wish Wombat could kill it. Like, I'm killing my it right feet. Now. I think I figured out my problem with the rower. Okay. And I know that this is probably not the case because there's a lot of ladies that use it, but mm-hmm. I feel like my feet are the wrong size for the rower. They're too small and they're too fat. <laughs> but wait a minute, your shoes. My shoes are Maybe on. they're too high. Maybe you have the foot plates up too high. Maybe. I've I've played around with them a little bit, and sometimes it, it does help. But it's like I I don't want to have to play around with them every time I get low in there. Low is better yeah. for you. You should have it lower rather than higher. Yeah. My feet always fall out of the stupid stirrups. It doesn't matter what I do or maybe how tight I have it. Maybe your shoes are not it. the right type of shoes. I don't know what it is. Maybe your feet yeah. are are animal feet. Basically, I'm I'm like. I'm the biggest nerd when it comes to orange theory. There's nothing I do. I once stubbed my toe. I told you this. I stubbed my toe on the treadmill. Oh. Like can't. running. My foot just kind of went down the wrong way and I stubbed my toe and it hurt a lot, but I didn't want to stop. Right. The whole, you know, because when you stop, you lose all your momentum. And people so look at you. kind of run through it. I once choked on my water while I was on the treadmill and I was like, <laughs> 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 I once dropped the weight right on my fingers. I'm like, I'm going to do that. All that I do a lot. I'm like, it's like, if you could do something that makes you look like a loser, right. I've done it at Orange Theory. I, the only thing that I did once that was like pretty bad was doing the hip hinge swing where you hold a weight and you're basically making like a humping motion where you're swinging the weight. And I actually, it was like only like a 25 or 30 pound weight, but I, the weight slipped out of my hands while I was doing it and it went flying. And it's just a glass wall in front of me, but they had the Bosu ball there and it bounced. It went into the Bosu ball and the Bosu ball like absorbed a lot of it. And Uh then it just like spit it back onto the floor and the floor is soft, right? Like the Mm soft. And I looked around because I was like, oh fuck. And I looked around and like, nobody really seemed to notice, <laughs> but my ass sweat so much in that like three seconds where that thing was, <laughs> I sweat more in my ass crack than I did from running like, you know, a mile and a half on the treadmill before. But yeah, so now I'm very careful about that. I went sat down on the rower and the chair was broken and I didn't know the seat was broken and I fell right off. No. Yes, that actually happened. And I had to go and say, by the way, number four is broken. And I'm like, oh, we're so sorry about that. Are you sure you didn't break it? <laughs> yeah, no, I know I didn't. How do you break know? It. Because it was like I sat down on it and immediately just wobbled over. That's dangerous. I mean, I know. It really got hurt, actually. Like, I know. And, you know, of course it happens to me. But anyway, <laughs> let's watch some. Was things. everybody pointing and laughing? No, it was no one noticed, and if they did, they didn't say anything. Yeah, yeah. People are, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, it's like, I'm basically the John Candy or Chris Farley of every of any Orange Theory class. It's and silly. it's only like two guys in the class usually, right? Usually, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. It's mostly women. Sometimes there's two types of guys in in an Orange Theory class. There's a fat guy who's doing his best, and then there's the cheapy guy. And every cheapy guy is always the same. A, they're always bald. It's not true. They're always skinny. They always get over 30 splat points. And they always burn like 900 calories. Because, and I've seen like at least four different cheapy guys. There's not enough sample guys. size. It's like you've only seen probably like four guys in the whole time you've ever been to Orange Theory. They're all the same. <laughs> it's only four guys. That's why. <laughs> They're all the same. No, we have like, we have different guys. You have a club? Is that what you're saying? You have no, meetings? no. We have. <laughs> There's, we have short guys who are very fit and strong. We have, there's a guy that's your height and like, he's definitely lifting heavier weights. I try not to look cause he's definitely picking up heavier weights sometimes than I am. And I'm, that's fine. doesn't make me feel that great, but cause he's five one or whatever. 
Oh, I'm not five one. Well, it was five five foot, whatever. I'm not five foot. <laughs> four eleven. That's four just, eleven. Okay. Just, like, we'll split the difference. I'm getting shorter, turning into my great grandmother every time. You... <laughs> no, okay. no. The, the good thing about Orange Theory, I feel, is like no one's really looking at what you're doing. So when you do drop the weight or fall off the rower, people are people are too tired doing their own fucking thing. All, they can't be too, bothered. They're too in, involved with what they're doing. And if they're it not, they're doing it wrong, and you should yell at them. Mm-hmm. Okay, should we do watch okay. this, jerks? Sure. Let's hear about these documentaries that you got I watched, lined up. Yeah, I watched some documentaries this week. I watched Sly, uh, the Sylvester Stallone documentary. Yep. Uh, Sylvester Stallone is very interested. Sylvester Stallone is very interested in Sylvester Stallone. That's the that's how I would describe this documentary. <laughs> well, it's called Sly, and it's about it him. Is, it is er. called Sly. It is about him, and it's very much him talking about himself. And, you know, say, you know, he says very nice things about himself for an hour and a half. Yeah. I mean, he definitely did not have an easy life. His father beat the crap out of him, uh, you know, often. Uh, and he spent the rest of his life uh, compensating for the fact that his father beat the crap out of him often. And th and that's where he is. And, he, and it's really a boy named Sue here. Yeah, it's very it's much life. a boy a boy named Sly. Yes, a hundred percent. Like, there's even footage when he was older and successful. Uh, he had he uh, bought horses and did a polo tournament, and he played polo and his father played with him. And during the polo match, there was one basically really cheap shot, and it was his father almost killing Sylvester Stallone during this polo match. And he goes, after that, I never played polo again, and I sold all the horses, and that was <laughs> it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It sucks. It, it's like, it's, he's very interesting. He, you know, it, obviously things haven't always been easy for him. It's amazing to see how successful he became with what, you know, with all he's done. But I also could tell that he's probably not an easy person to get along with or to work with or to live with. But it's interesting. Very interesting. I guess you're going to avoid doing all those things. Exactly. I'm not going to hang out with him. And, you know, and the stuff about his son is also very sad. Yeah. Obviously, you know, the son that passed away from heart disease. Yep. The undiagnosed. And yeah, he is not that he, anyone would be, but he's clearly hasn't really been able to move on from that fully. And you can tell by how it's not even what he says. It's what he doesn't say. If that makes sense. So very interesting. Interesting. I recommend it. Uh, I also watched the Albert Brooks documentary, uh, Defending My Life, Albert Brooks, which was uh, directed by his best friend since high school, uh, Rob Reiner. Nice. And that's also a real. That's that documentary is a little bit more fun. Uh, um, okay. Although there's also, you know, lots of lots of father issues in that one as well. Uh, Albert Brooks wasn't beaten by his father, but his father died when he was about 10. Uh, his father was a famous stand-up comedian at the time in the late fifties who died on stage. Oy. And, and there's a, you know, a lot of his anxieties about live performing and just, you know, everything he's done in his life. And it's very interesting. He's also a genius, uh, you know, filmmaker in his own right. And it's really that one, that one I liked a lot more. I thought it was just a little bit more interesting. There's a really good uh, super Dave documentary also on hbo max <laughs> super dave was his was his older brother mm -hmm. and those two documentaries the albert brooks and the uh the the bob einstein documentary they work together really well i recommend watching both of them Wait, they, this is older it's like a stepbrother or something no his, That's his, his older brother. brother they just had yeah. different names no his, albert brooks's real last name is einstein but he didn't use Albert Einstein professionally. Right. Yikes. <laughs> That's interesting, parents. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you learn all about them in the documentaries. And uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I recommend I recommend both. And then we I went to the movie theater on Saturday morning. And so a movie in the theater that not many people did. But I saw it. Yeah, I was gonna say, but two two thirds of the show saw it. And that was the Marvels. Mm -hmm. Too woke for me. Sorry. Yeah. What? Is, it's, not, <laughs> it's surprisingly not very woke. Not woke all. enough for me. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I. Did you like it? Uh, I did. I enjoyed like the 
I mean, right out of the gate, it's only like an hour and a half or so long, right? Like an hour, hour 45, minutes, something, yeah. something like that. I don't know. It's a, it's a noticeable difference than two and a half hours or three hours for these type of movies. Mm-hmm. It, there's, there's some like, I don't know. I forgive it because it's an hour and 45 minutes that they don't, they don't have to go into as much detail right like it's like here's the person here's their motivation for like the the bad character that's enough we really don't the movie's not about that that evil character right like that's just like happens to be in the movie is is the villain they had to have somebody for the marvels the to fight. fight yeah right but other than that it's like okay this is this is not unique ground we're treading but it's a cute movie and it doesn't take itself very seriously, especially in some some spots. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the best spots. Yeah, yeah, and I, I really like uh, Kamala Khan. Like that that actress. I think she does a very good mm-hmm. job with Miss Marvel. Mm-hmm. So the kids loved it. Um, all the goose is a, is a hit. I mean, they that, that doesn't surprise me. Yeah. So. I don't they, I, uh, I seem to like I don't know like I wasn't a a Marvel like cosmic universe mm-hmm. kid growing up but I just think they're Marvel movies that take place in outer space they seem to work pretty well like generally that, speaking unless they yeah. have Thor in them there's Thor, Thor Love and Thunder right. Thor some, Love and Thunder is a bad oh, movie I, I mm, yes. you're just not a fan of, of cancer. I think is the <laughs> can't you no, find love, the first of fun all, in cancer? I, I famously love cancer. We all know that. Okay, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, that movie. I have issues with Thor: Love and Thunder that I could go into, but I don't want no, to. We don't need. Time. We don't need to. I I'm okay with Thor: Love and Thunder. I think the Marvels was significantly better than both Ant Man and Thor, the most recent. Oh, okay. Yeah, I I would agree with that. Yeah, I think the I liked it a lot. I liked where it was fun and it didn't take itself too seriously. I thought it had some really good moments. I thought there were some really funny moments. And overall, I thought it was, again, a a fast paced, good movie. I'm not going to say it was great. It's not great. It's not like, oh, my God, this is the most amazing thing I've seen. But it has some really cool moments. I think the the pre credit scene. Uh huh. Was one of the was one of the best things Marvel could have done. Sure, we won't talk about that. No, we but... won't talk about that. But it, it was like, oh, this is oh, here's the thing they needed to do a year and a half ago. Maybe, yeah. I mean, I mean, yes, I was excited. Spider Man for, for that as well. Spider Man, yeah. close, close. Just, just Spider Man and everything. Just come, yeah, it's come just like, and through. now Spider Man's here. No, that right. does not happen. Um, it should have. Yeah. Uh, uh, like if if they if the mar I mean originally the Marvels was supposed to come out before Ant Man and Thor, sure. And it's interesting, like if that would have changed anything because it works because it's pretty much self contained. It is very self contained, right? Like it's not like, hey, here's a major villain that we're going to be fighting against or trying to build up to be something else. It's just like, no, here's a hour and 45 minutes of a superhero movie you don't hear these three characters that are connected to each other but don't haven't seen each other or don't really know each other and now they're going to get to know each other and at the end they're all going to be good friends right i mean there's nothing wrong with a movie like that either it's just a shame i think part of why people didn't go to see it is because those other two movies and i know guardians did really well but that one was also really good but I think Thor: Love and Thunder and Ant Man: Quantumania may have taken some of it out of it, some some wind out of the sails as far as people wanting to rush to see it when they're like, eh, Disney Plus, eh, Disney, it'll be on Disney Plus. I mean, and I hate women. to say it, wimp, that's what I was gonna say. There is some fact to like, of course, of course, and 100%. women for this. Yeah. I mean, it's gotten it got really good reviews. It has really high audience scores. The it's, outfits it's aren't hot either. Actually, they're very, they're very covered up. Actually, oh, no, they that are is hot? that is yeah. Uh, oh. the, I will say that Brie Larson in the skimpy white shirt, Ooh. the skimpy white t-shirt, Brie Larson in the beginning of the movie. I meant the costume, her like the costumes. Sorry. Skimpy white like this, t-shirt. It's, it's that's not a costume. That's just that's her. Just she happened to be wearing a t-shirt in that scene. Oh, I'm and she's also like, fully nude at one part. This is that. Fully nude. Yeah, sure. And the whole scene on the water planet is pretty awesome. With the wet sure. t-shirt planet. 
The yep. wet t-shirt water planet is pretty pretty cool. Uh, the yeah. problem is that the movie didn't do well, and it was a shorter movie, and I'm worried that they're gonna get the wrong message. The studio. Gonna... I think it's I I think that there's a lot of takeaways from it, but I don't think the takeaway should be that this movie was bad and they should feel bad about it. I think there is. I mean, obviously, the strike didn't help. The lack of promotion. The coming out at, you know, the November release, although maybe who knows? I, I don't know. There's a lot. Right. I think I mean, Secret Invasion was against... te- Secret Invasion was terrible. That doesn't have anything to do with this. Well, it does, though, because that's the same. That was like it there was Nobody... a lot of concern that that was going to lead right into the Marvels. But mm-hmm. the Marvels literally acts as though Secret Invasion ne- just didn't happen. Like they I, act I like it's not. I acted even like Secret Invasion didn't even happen. Like I forgot that that was a TV show. Like I don't. Oh, so I don't think bad. that many people are like have to watch every Marvel show to make them go watch the movie, or like every Marvel show to go mm-hmm. watch the movie. I think this one really comes down to like the overall appeal of this. These characters just isn't as wide as what other characters are. I yep. mean, you, you throw a That's Spider Man swinging in for a little bit, and yeah. And the numbers go up. I mean, it's not. It's I know. Not and like you're saying fun. that's kind of a bummer because I think they're good characters. Sure. Oh yeah, no, I do too. I like it. It's just like, I don't know. It's just not going to be as big of a movie. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, but it's it's it should be. I'm not going to say it just should be as big a movie, but it should be bigger than it was. Maybe that's it's all. you know just a post COVID world and people aren't going back to the movies no, as much. No. no. I mean, it's, you know, Barbie made a billion dollars. Yeah. So did Oppenheimer. Yeah, I guess you're right. Well, I mean, all of these Marvel movies were all so closely tied together and like building to Endgame. So you like you had to go see every one of them. Mm. Now they've just kind of been meandering for. Yeah, they don't. They're, like they're directionless. Or so. Yeah. so you're like, I don't know. Do I need to see this one? Like, I haven't seen Guardians still and I know I like it. And I just haven't seen it yet because I know like. There's nothing pushing me to go. Don't see watch it. that one with your kids. Uh, the, it's yeah, I know, but don't uh, watch it with your wife either. <laughs> it it'll be all right. Uh, <laughs> why why? I have afraid to ask. Maybe I shouldn't ask. There there's I, I mean there, there's, oh, there's animal animal, animal, animal death, cruelty animal, death. animal cruelty in it. Um, oh, but man. I know that there's not like I'm not missing out on anything like on a large scale and you're like, not story like not. right like mm-hmm. i want to see it because i want to see the movie but it's not like right. i didn't rush out to theaters to see yeah. it which is why that pre-credit scene from the marvels is like oh where was this two years ago where was this two years and the fu- and is there needs to be follow-up to that and that's not bringing that's not putting butts in seats it's you know what though it could no mm. <laughs> No. I'm, go- I'm gonna i'm gonna agree to disagree all right all right let's let's move on uh penguin overload writes in he says what is wombat's thoughts on the madam web trailer me personally think it's a shit show yeah that's that's about right <laughs> <laughs> who is what is who is madam web i don't even know madam, okay madam, okay go ahead madam web is an old lady mm-hmm. who can who can't walk that sits in a giant chair with tubes in her back, uh-huh. and she can tell the future. And a few times of, of the Spider Verse, of the Spider, of Spider People, of Spider People, Only the future of people, people who have been bitten by a spider or have been affected by a spider somehow. Yes. Yeah. Okay, that seems really specific. She was yeah. she was heavily evol- involved in the Spider Man cartoon that was in the nineties. Mm-hmm. Do you remember that one? Like there was a whole arc where like all of a sudden she was like the main thing in this. It was really okay, I see her. Yep, 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 yep. She looks familiar. Yeah. Now That's in the Sydney comics, Sweeney's character. No, oh. in the comics they did have another person take on the name of Madam Web, and that was Julia Carpenter, who was the second Spider Woman from the '80s. She was the West Coast Avengers Spider Woman, and that's who Sydney Sweeney is playing. She's playing Julia Carpenter, Spider Woman Two. Although Spider Woman One has yet to be in anything yet, so it's kind of weird that they're starting with the second Spider Woman and not the first Spider Woman. But whatever, I don't write these things. I'm um, confused. I, it's it's but, nothing against Julia Carpenter. I don't dislike her. It's just weird that that's 
Wait, Julia you know, Carpenter is a real person or a character? No, that's a character. Okay. Sydney, that's who Sydney Sweeney's playing. Well, I watched the trailer. Madam, I did. I don't recall seeing a Madam Webb in the trailer. Mm. Did oh. I miss it? Yeah, what's no, her face? Dakota her, Johnson. Uh, yeah. Daco- Dakota, Dakota Johnson. Johnson is playing Madam Webb, but she's not an old lady in a chair anymore. Right. She's, she's, like, the- she's like in every scene of the trailer. Who, okay, but she just looked like a regular person. Yes. yes. And what about the guy that looked like Spider Man, but meaner? Oh, that who was it? It was like Ezekiel Stain, right? Uh, I don't think that's his name, is it? Is I think I thought no, no that's it's Obadiah a, Stain. That's it's Obadiah a, Stain. It's, that's yeah. his superhero name. It, no. It's more uh, more Morkel Morkan. Is that no, what, it's not, is it Morgan? I think it's some combination of him and this other character. Now I have to look it up. You're gonna make me look it up. There, I mean, there was a Spider Man that like fed off of other Spider Men. Yeah, and, that's Morden. Morden, yeah, yeah. I feel like you make a trailer like this. You got to. How do you assume that people know who that is, and shouldn't they know who the villain is? Mm, It looks like Spider Man, right? Ezekiel Sims. That's who he's playing. Right. Okay. That's why I was confused. I'm like, I know that's not Spider Man, but it looks like him, Mm -hmm. and he's angry. He has no jokes, (laughs) no jokes at all from this Spider Man. It's the same tone as all these other Spider-Man adjacent films. It's, it, they're kind of, I don't know, they're edgy, but also like just very straightforward <laughs> in the writing. You're saying just, like edgy yet toothless. Basically. Yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, it, it's going to fit in perfectly with your, with your Morbius and your Venoms and right. like, I'm going to watch it. I'll, I'll watch it. Not gonna like it, but I'm gonna watch right. it. Right, I have to. I'll watch it. Um, what TV shows are you watching? I did finish up Loki. Speaking of Marvel stuff, yep. Uh, and uh, fin- oh, I'm not gonna say it was a perfect series because that would be stretching it. But I will say the finale is surprisingly satisfying, and it does you know stick the landing, so to speak. And if you want to, you know, wrap up the Loki saga in a nice bow, I recommend. I recommend it. It's fun. It's it's fun. It's impressive how they were able to kind of pull off what they pull off with that with the end of that show because it's hard to end things, especially Marvel stuff lately. So the fact that they were able to do that in a satisfying way that makes you go, this feels right. Uh, I give them a lot. Of, I give them a lot of credit for that. Sounds good. Uh, mm-hmm. We started watching RoboDoc, the RoboCop documentary. It's uh, mm. four parts, They're each like an hour and change. We Did you watched... get up to the Oreo part? No, no. You no. Got to the I've, seen, I've certainly seen it on my Instagram feed. Um, <laughs> although I didn't actually watch it because I know I'm going to watch Robo it later. Robo wants Oreo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it's very interesting so far, obviously, just seeing how hard it was to make the movie. I think like one of the most interesting parts so far was that the budget of the movie is about $15 million at the time. And the suit was such a big deal, like, and so hard to make that it cost a million dollars and it wasn't ready until like right when they were ready to shoot basically. And you know, that's like a big fucking percentage of the budget, just the suit. And it wasn't like the guy, like Peter Weller couldn't move in it. And he had just, he'd been studying like this from this movement coach, all these different moves. And it was just all use a waste of time because the suit was so stiff. He couldn't do any of the things. And he like blew a shit fit. And the movement coach basically stepped in and saved the day and gave him some like new moves to do. And I know it sounds like I'm not sure yet. Cause I only watched like the first episode uh, and actually I haven't even finished that. But it's, I'm wondering if Peter Weller wasn't a little difficult on the set. I'm, Did I'm, they ever finish the movie? <laughs> they made uh, two of them, actually. Okay. There's rumors of a third one, uh, unconfirmed. Unconfirmed. And I heard yeah. there might be a video game, but I'm not sure about that. It's stupid. Uh, so we watched that and you have to buy that. That's not available anywhere for, uh, for streaming yet. Or maybe it is one of those like weird, like horror standalone streaming services that I'm like a shutter something. I don't, I don't know. Something like that. But anyway, it was like 13 bucks. It's whatever. Uh, we also started watching invincible season two, 
which is uh, very good. Again, if you're like looking for a different type of superhero show um, with <laughs> subjects that they don't cover on the other superhero platforms, uh, Invincible does a really good job. The writing is really good. Um, and it's super violent. It's very, very violent, though. So if you're not looking for that, can't watch it. Mm. But it's great. Yes. I mean, you play, they released Omni Man in uh, Mortal Kombat uh -huh. this week. Yeah. I, I guess it coincides with the premiere of the show. Yeah. And uh, he is quite formidable in that game when you use him. He's a lot of he's a lot of fun to play with. He's fairly slow as a character, but even like his basic punch takes off like a quarter of someone's health. Right. <laughs> so I've watched his like it's a lot of YouTube videos of his fatalities and stuff. And yeah, they, I've done it about fifty times. They've taken it. They're all right from the show. They're all right yeah. from scenes mm -hmm. of the show. It's uh, you watch. You don't watch Invincible. I well, I I think I had like two episodes left of season one, and I just never finished it. It's pretty good, and season two started off really strong, like right away, like super strong. It's just, it's so different. It's it's like The Boys in a way, but even it's, it's even different than The Boys somehow, even though they're both super violent and showing you like sort of the darker side of superheroes. Um, they both still seem different enough from each other to, to keep it interesting. All right, then. How about a word from our sponsor? Our final sponsor. Uh, <laughs> Goodbye, what Fresh. Is, yes. What is HelloFresh? With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. The holidays are right around the corner, and HelloFresh can help take the stress out of dinner by delivering everything you need to cook up tasty meals right to your door, saving you tons of time. Everyone wants to cut back on errands and spending time in checkout lines this time of year, so skip that extra grocery store trip and instead get fresh ingredients and delicious recipes delivered with HelloFresh. Just pick your meals, decide on a delivery date, and sit back. Just like always, HelloFresh's ingredients travel from the farm to your door, so you know they're fresh. Everything arrives pre-portioned so you can get right to cooking quick. And, and in case you missed it, HelloFresh is so much more than delicious dinners. HelloFresh can take the hassle out of every mealtime occasion with easy breakfasts, quick lunches, and snacks all delivered along with your weekly box. Um, we've been HelloFresh customers for It Feels Like Forever. Uh, this week, I tried the uh, maple tofu with uh, with rice, and it was so good. My wife was not too sure when she saw it when when I when we opened the box. She's like, "Why did you get maple tofu?" And then I made it, and she ate all of it, and was like, "This is one of the best things I've ever had." So, you know, there's all sorts of fun new dishes. There's a uh, goat cheese chicken which I am making for dinner tomorrow night, but I'm excited for that one. I had pork chops with, um, it came with with couscous and the couscous, there was golden raisins and chopped walnuts. It's just really good, really satisfying meals. And you feel like you know what you're doing when you cook it. So I can't recommend it enough. Just go to hellofresh.com slash CADCAST free and use code CADCAST free for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash CAGCAST free with code CAGCAST free. That's HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Nice. Sorry, ship was making. I think you should leave references in the chat. So mm -hmm. he, he, he threw me for a sec. Yeah. Let's do some new releases. I see there's a lot of them. Uh, anything that we need to talk about, though? We, I know Berserk, Berserk uh, Reloaded. What's it called? Recharged. Recharged. You, you yeah, played you, some of that. Did you, you talk about that last week? Yeah. Yes. yeah I didn't like right. it. I didn't like it. Mm. No. The new Call of Duty uh, game is out. You can get exclusive uh, content at uh, Little Caesars. <laughs> People don't like it, though. The feedback has been pretty bad. No. Well, oh. that, yes, also. But the new Call of Duty, I feel, is getting a lot of negative feedback. I don't but know. You can I'll play get a pizza it cutter, game pass. like that. You can wear Little Caesars. What's that? Oh, it's yeah. a pizza cutter. Yeah, I mean, not as good as the E3 pizza cutter. 
Wait, I, so when is this coming to Game Pass or no? I don't know. I assume eventually. eventually. Yeah. Well, uh, eventually, it will. sure. Eventually, but I'm in the near sure future. The, I mean, are people upset about it because of that? No, that no. Why? They think they, no? they say the campaign is like really shitty somehow. Hmm. Like just like subpar. The game is subpar, basically. I don't think people are complaining about the uh, anything to do with the, the platform. I, I bet people still play it. I bet you're right. I bet you're right. But they are complaining. Okay, so that's that's the important part. I see Hogwarts Hogwarts Legacy is out for Switch. That took a long time. Uh, I, I mean, they had to take out all those pixels. If you take out, did you see the graphics comparisons? I saw one. I, I don't. I don't need to see them. I know what it's they look so. Like. <laughs> it's so funny. Uh, I, that, that, I mean, good for them for getting it running on Switch. Um, yeah. The, the new switch will be around soon, right? It's coming. Right. Right. So I know this, uh, this UO, UFO robot Grindizer. I have no idea how to pronounce that, but I know that will be a big hit in my household. Can you finish the title, please? Oh, the Feast of the Wolves? <laughs> UFO robot Grindizer, yep. the Feast of the Wolves. Yes. Funny how what, that word sounds is, so different. What is that? The two of you. The Grindizer? What is that? <laughs> that is, it's a Japanese robot. He's the one that has like the Texas Longhorn horns on his head. I don't know who that is. It, it's a big, I don't know. I have is, no idea why I know what it is, but I know what it is. It's an iconic robot. Oh, thing. okay. I know who that is. Yeah, of course. You have no idea why you know who that is. Nope. But you know him. I'm sure Bandai made a toy of him. Probably. probably. And his, I don't jo know. his job is to make sure the wolves don't eat too much, or... I don't know. I don't know why it's called the Feast of the Wolves. Have enough to eat? Yeah. It's... Or just to mm. blow up the wolves. I'm pretty sure he's just going to punch the wolves. Right. As one does. But, but I, I know it looks... Uh, I don't know. It looks pretty fun. It's, okay. It's a... I don't know. Go around and punch things game. Does it like, look uh, as fun? Open world ish looking. <laughs> Does it look as fun as a state simulator, a state agent simulator, or gym simulator twenty four? Those are two games. Also, they're out. Hmm. How, how about that? Um, <laughs> yep, simulators. What about? Did you see this simulator? Which one? Which Village one? Tycoon Farm City Simulator. <laughs> No, nope, but I see there's another one. There's Prison Break Jail Escape Simulator. What are you simulating? A village it's, Tycoon? It's all, it's all, Farm it's all, City uh, Simulator. It's all from Roblox. So if oh. you ever, Ro, every other game in Roblox are these simulator type games, and that's what all the kids like. And just the word simulator gets yeah. kids excited, usually <laughs> children under 12. They go, oh, it's a simulator game. I know what that is. Truck Simulator Collection is also out this week for the Switch. Yeah, it's all it's all Roblox wannabe trying right. to get in horn in on that shovelware. Mm -hmm. That Dash is playing a game that was on sale. I think it's called Destroy and Build, where you wait, wait, know, wait. You Do you down. build and destroy? No, you destroy and build. You can't build and destroy. That'd be the opposite of what. This oh, game is. I'm. I knew I was gonna get it. You, wrong. you have to renovate renovate buildings and like. There's goals like go in and throw stuff in the dumpster and then like knock the tiles out of this bathroom. We're going to get to a game like that in a little bit. Okay. Well, that, yep. that's what this, that's what this, there's already destroy and build. So I can't wait to hear what, what else is on the market. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's get to Wombat's fortnightly news and we can get to yeah. it. Yeah. We're halfway through Fortnite OG. The most popular season in Fortnite history. In video game history, you mean? In video game history. It's inc it's incredibly popular. People are still playing it. Actually, it does. It, I find it kind of shocking because, you know, I'll usually turn it on in the mornings just to, you know, because that's when I can, because the, the dailies come out now an hour earlier than they used to. So now I could actually get it done before work. But to see that there's like <laughs> 1.5 million people playing at that time of day is kind of crazy. Anyway, I hit level 70, which is the level cap for the season, so I'm very excited. And Mazel. big update to big update tomorrow. Big update tomorrow. 
Big update tomorrow. That's it. That's it. It was a minute. Not even. Nice. Good. Jeez, people. No one so did mean. anything. No, we're good. Uh-huh. Everybody's good. Yep. Excited we, for the we, Game Awards? I saw the Game Awards. Game Awards are Fortnite. <laughs> Wait, what? What? The Game Awards are in Fortnite. Oh, yeah. There's they a tie-in. There's a tie-in this year. Yeah, there's a Game Awards tie-in in Fortnite with Fortnite Keeley hosting like a thing. Hosting a map you could go to and he stands in the middle and he's like, Hey, now you can vote for your favorite map in Fortnite. And Just nah. shoot this. If you shoot this, you vote for Alan yeah. Wake too. Yeah, some nonsense. I don't know. I haven't checked it out myself, nor do I care that much. Do you what think do you have- you, and everybody like everybody only has to aim at Alan Wake too? Because it's it's a epic published game. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Right. Uh, aim assist, like, aim Wait, assist. I, yeah, aim assist. It's just always going to Alan Wake too. Yeah. You have to aim no, away. No, I was it. going. Oh. <laughs> no, I was trying to sh- oh. Uh, uh I don't know. Not I even, mean the, oh, no, it the is nominees, up for game of the year. The yeah. Nomin- yeah, it's up for game of the year. I think it'll win. I haven't played it, it yet, but I think it's gonna win. You think it's gonna beat Spider Man 2? I think it will. It only because like I look at this list mm-hmm. and I know all these games. Uh-huh. I've played all these games before. They're all big they're all, sequels. They're all sequels. Uh-huh. Uh, one of them's a remake. You got Resident Evil yeah. 4 on I the list. I can't believe Resident Evil Resident 4 Resident Evil 4 is, is not going to win Game of the Year. I, it, I know it won't no win, but it's way. shocking to me that that's like that's that shouldn't be in consideration. Not because it's not fantastic, but because is it really dis- so different that it's new new enough to be a Game of the Year contender? No. It's, it's there. It's going to lose. I it's gonna lose. Like, um, they needed a sequel with a four, right? They had right, plenty of twos. Like, I think your your actual contenders here are Tears of the Kingdom, Baldur's Gate three, and Alan Wake two. I think those are your your three contenders. I yeah. actually wouldn't be surprised if Baldur's Gate three wins. Sure, uh, it's riding high on a lot of a lot of lists. Uh, it, it, I. I, I would see that being the case. And, and I mean, you got, you got the Zelda in there, of course, because I don't know. It's, it's Zelda. It's good. Mario Brothers Wonder, I really enjoyed it. I doesn't deserve to win best game of the year. And I would say the same really for Marvel Spider-Man 2. Like it, both of those are just like, yes, this is, this is the game they made. W- the iterations on these games that you would expect them to make. Do you think they should have put Diablo four on there instead of resident evil four? I don't put whatever you want on there. That whatever that spot that is, you know, they needed another, (laughs) they needed a game with a four in it. I'm just thinking, you know, that would have been, I see. I see. Yeah. They needed another game to lose in that spot. The four. Yeah. They needed another game with a four to lose in that spot. But at least that's something that's like brand new. Yeah. 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 That's a better call. Who cares Do you think if it's that good? would start Starfield? That's the name of that game, right? Yeah, yeah. Starfield. Do you think mm-hmm. that was Starfield spot? And what yes. happened? Yes, I think that was a yes. I think that uh, well, no, I'm sure they made this list like, you know, seven months ago, maybe even a year ago. And they were like, Oh yeah, don't forget to put Starfield in there and they like, pencil it in. And then the game comes out and they're like, Oh, we can't have Starfield in there. And they take it out. Like, well, what can we throw in there? And they're like, I don't know. What did you like? <laughs> so it said Resident Evil 4. And that's and that's yes, I'm convinced that's what happened. Yes. Yeah, I have a feeling they decided that these games are gonna be in there before most of these games came out. And they had to remove Starfield. Yes. It still got nominated for for some things, right? Like yeah, it's got nominated, yeah, but Best it's glitches. not as mm-hmm. Although they also should have included uh Mortal Kombat one in there, so they could have had a one, two, with arena four. Just saying. Best My favorite category is uh, best action game. Like I saw the nominees for this and I'm like, what? Like, first of all, I don't understand what an action game is compared to an action adventure game. Like okay. the differences there. So the, well, the in, in, one, in one game, you, <laughs> you only action. There's no adventure. Only action, in one only game, action you, no in, adventures. In one game, you do stuff. And in the right. other game, stuff happens to you. Right. So the best action games... I mean, these are all these are all, I guess, worthwhile contenders. But it's Armored Core, Six, Fires of Rubicon, Dead Island Two, Ghost Runner Two, Hi-Fi Rush, and Remnant Two. Like, 
I don't know. Do no, we have I, too many there is no, here? This there's is. no <laughs> difference between an action game and an action adventure game. No, the I see there what the is literally is not. No, you the action right. adventure games are all like the legitimate contenders for all the things. The it's big Alan budget. Two, Spider-Man 2, <laughs> Resident Evil 4, Star Wars Jedi Survival, and Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. All of those games in that list are yeah. than the games that are in the action list. Yeah, yeah. Adventure. When they say adventure game, that just means like an extra like 40 million development budget or something like that. Uh-huh. Yeah. Something like that. I, That's I, the, I, that, I that, that. The well, adventure. there is a best indie game on here. What do you mean? Uh, well, no, I mean, those weren't indie games. So we're in no, the, there is an action. indie game. I'm saying there is an indie game category, isn't there? Yeah. There is, because I know people were upset that one of them was, like, made by Tencent or something. Yes. Yeah. Not to, it was a different one. It was the one with the N. N, N, N. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. The one that made Robocop, I think. Mm, was that Nacon? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I think. I'm pretty sure that's right. People, yeah, people were upset by about... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're like how can you the guy from npd um matt yeah he's like you can't just call something an indie game because the graphics resemble other indie games if it's made by a big company like a or a, a company that also you know a big company that owns several studios and, and is pu- also publishing it it's not an indie game no matter what it looks like so you can't just call stuff because you have a feeling like it or plays like an indie game. It doesn't change what it is. He was he's like, "Where's that?" I, guess, I meaning? guess we can. I guess we can. But also, like the other thing I saw, people talking about how like Xbox didn't get any, uh, you know, no big nominees this year, and also like people getting upset on behalf of developers for not getting their game nominated. Did you see that one? I saw that a lot on social media. People are like, it's not fair to the developers. Like, dude, like, how do you know what the developers think? How do you know the developers give two shits about the game awards? Like, don't, don't, you're not, if you're not, if you didn't work on the game, don't, don't worry about it. (laughs) Both Apex Legends and Fortnite were nominated for best ongoing game. Well, Fortnite has to win, obviously. I mean. Doesn't have to. They're having an event in the game. I know they. I know they. And there's supposed to be some sort of Fortnite of announcement on the award show. Hey, we won. Yeah. <laughs> That's the announcement. Look, we made this asset of this trophy that we won that we're handing to one of our characters. Right, Jeff Keeley now live Jeff in Keeley game. Is you can buy Jeff Keeley. Keeley. Game. Yeah, Jeff Keeley live in game to announce that we lost the uh, best ongoing game category. How the long do you think before they sell the Jeff Keeley skin? No one wants that. They should give it away to people who watch the game awards. Yeah, that's probably what they'll do. And it was it was Nexon is the name of the company. Yes. Nexon and they they published Dave the Diver. Um yes. which I've heard good things about. But I got yes. the end right. Yes, you did. Thank, thank got you. most of, I got most of the name right too. Yes. It was I got three out of five letters right. Yeah. Good job. Uh what are we playing, Wombat? Uh have you did you get a chance to play any teardown? I did, uh, but not much. I didn't really make it much farther than I had gotten when I bought the game on PC in, I don't know, 2020. Okay, well, for those who are unfamiliar, we were both uh, kindly uh, sent codes for Teardown for the Xbox. It's also on the PlayStation 5. It's going to be part of the the PS Plus Mid. It's going to be one of those Mm. games. So if you have that, you'll be able to check out Teardown. Uh, it is, how do you describe this game? You are, it's a first person game where you are tasked to basically destroy a building, usually for nefarious purposes, but it has a very unique graphic style where it uses uh voxel style graphics, similar almost to like a Roblox, uh, not Roblox, um, uh, Minecraft, but a little bit, but not better. quite, but better. better. It looks like better. My, if Minecraft had better graphics and effects. Yes, uh, it's like better, it like. better graphics and physics, uh, and physics is a big part of it because you're using different techniques to knock down these buildings. Hence the name of the game, Teardown, and it's it is fun to uh, knock down buildings in unique and un, and and not ordinary ways. So yeah, I, I played like I think like the first five levels of it. Yep. Uh some of it some of it can be a little difficult and frustrating at times, but when you pull things off, it can also be very satisfying. 
So that's that's those are my thoughts on teardown. Yeah, it seems like some some problem solving and destructible environments. If you like that, it's cool. Mm-hmm. I, one thing I noticed was there's no invert Y option in the uh, in the options, and I was like, oh, fuck. I wouldn't know. I've never done that. I know. I'm old. That's an old thing, I guess. But most games have that option. This one doesn't. But the Xbox has. You can go into the accessories app on the Xbox and just set it in there and it'll work for the, any game. So I just went right into the Xbox settings and, and changed it. So I thought that was cool. Did your son play that way? Like, did you corrupt him by no. making... Okay. Fuck no. That's how I know if he's been playing my games. Because okay. he never just puts checking. it back. He'll never, ever put it back. No, he, I'm, I'm glad he won't. <laughs> well, he gives, he gives, <laughs> up the, gives up the game that way. Um, all right. Let's... Uh, I think we're at the CAG bag. Sounds good. V. Elliott writes in uh, Cheapy's Quest Corner R.I.P. Does Meta Quest 3 interest you? I mean, I see it at Target. You know, it's right there in the display case. You're not, Mm -hmm. you said? No. And it's only, what do you mean, I guess for you, R.I.P., but I use my headset. You're talking about the bit, the the bit on the CADcast, the segment on the CADcast. Yeah, I mean, I use you mine like we oh, at least two, three times a week. Wombat's doing supernatural. I get a I get a push notification every time he finishes a workout. I mm-hmm. keep my it's and a, they're getting longer too. I noticed. They're it's a, I, if you really do it for an extended period of time, it's a really good workout. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The problem with MetaQuest three, and maybe the problem with VR in general, is that the games have not gotten really better with time or technology like i feel like still the best games on those platforms on the quest two or three are still fucking pistol pistol Pistol. whip super hot we talked about this yeah right like nothing's better so like nothing nothing's better than the stuff that already exists so if you need like the the mixed reality then okay meta quest three but if not then well, it's five hundred dollars even supernatural supernaturals there's nothing there's nothing they're gonna do to yeah Mm-hmm. But I think they're making a cheaper one. The rumor is they're coming out with another headset and it's going to be cheaper than... That Quest makes 3. more sense to me. Like something that's yeah. affordable. 300 bucks yeah. is where you need to be. Oh, they should be a two... But you can't make anything good. You can't make anything good with that. It doesn't have to be good. It needs to be good enough. 300... Three, Quest 2, I feel. Remember Quest 2 when it came out? It was 300... Before they raised the price? Mm-hmm. 300 bucks, nobody felt like they got ripped off by buying that thing. Like, it was, like, tech, the tech was worth it. Um, anyway, uh, what else we got here? Grunks44 asks, has anyone picked up Alan Wake 2 yet? Chip has, right? No, I have not yet. Oh, you I, haven't yet. Not yet. I mean, I, I have not had an opportunity to, like, sit down and, like, have time to play it. Did your copy of Midnight Suns ever show up? Yeah, it's okay. around here somewhere. Right, just checking. He's got it. He'll get to it. I am yeah, just yeah, it's over there. I can I can see it over there. Perfect. Let's do a live CAG bag question from the YouTube channel. Uh, this is from 200 STM. He says, "Is anyone going to pick up any arcade one ups? They're already on sale." I recall Wabat getting the Marvel superheroes counter arcade. I. It's funny they had the one day sale on the Ms. Pac Man one for a hundred bucks. And I was going to get it. I, well, okay. By going to get it, I mean, I audibly said to my wife, should I get it? To which she said, you already <laughs> have two of these. No. Is the so, countertop one? Yeah. The countertop was back, man. Yeah. I have no room for a full size one. I really like the counter ones. I kind of wish they made counter ones that had as many games as the big ones, but. What can you do? It's impossible to fit that many games in the small it's, yeah, yeah, right? Exactly. Uh-huh. Just hack it. I bet you can hack it and put whatever you want on there. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I'm sure you could fit an, fit about 300 games in one. By the way. Don't you already have an arcade legacy? I do. Well? I have the arcade legacy stick, which is pretty cool, too. So I don't really need it. I like how, I like the look of the uh, of the the countercades. I'm not looking to get anyone in trouble, but I'm pretty sure like the local ice cream place got one of those countertop things that you are ta- you got mm-hmm. and hacked it with like a really good interface and just it has like every game in there and yeah, it's I have like the very one has, slick how you go through everything i have the pac-man one which is a big hit in my house and i have the marvel superheroes one which is also a big hit in my house they're both very cool i got them when they were also both very cheap so cool 
Yeah. Uh, here's another question from the YouTube channel from Suvo. He asks, what do you guys think about the PS portal? I don't understand it. It's a stream. It's just for streaming inside your house. It's another screen only for streaming inside your house. Is that right? Yes. Only for streaming inside your house from your PS5. For the hardcore PlayStation nerds. Who want to do what? Play on the can? Wanna I, I, I... <laughs> they want to rub it. Because let's groin. face it, if you're the hardcore PS5 nerds, it's not like they have someone else in their house that needs the TV. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm not going to get one, but yeah, I, I sometimes play on a, on my phone or whatever, and do the remote play on my phone you when do. the kids are are playing. Yeah. When's the last time you did that on the PlayStation? Uh, I generally do it if the other way around, if. If like Dash was playing something on the PlayStation, I'll get out my phone and use my backbone and play something on the Xbox. Right. But is that like, would you say that would be an ideal way to play a game like a Spider-Man 2? Or does a game like that is that you know, not to sound like like those movie snobs that say you have to play something in the theater? Is Spider-Man 2D should you be playing that on a big screen? I I, I mean, did. You- yeah. I mean, no, yes, of course the answer is you. yes. You you got a PlayStation Five so you can run it at four K on a I big screen. I was going to say, are you are you uh, are you lessening the experience by yes. playing it? Yes, okay. of course. Okay. Yeah, maybe just right? play side missions on it. Yeah, and how much does this stupid thing cost? Isn't it like four hundred bucks or something? Mm, it was, uh, nah, three hundred. Three hundred. What is it? It too much? What is, Whatever what is it is called. Portal. PlayStation Portal. PS Portal. Are they, are they sold out? I'm sure. Because they only made eight. <laughs> it's 400, I think. I don't know. Maybe it is sold out. I don't even see it anywhere. By, by now on Amazon? Retailing for $199.99. Okay. So it got into the, uh, it, it just has to be good enough price range. <laughs> no, that's for VR. You right. can hold this thing close to your face. Yeah, that's for VR. <laughs> the, the, right up next to your face, it'll be like you're there. This thing is this. I just again, I see no purpose. They probably to sell out. They probably sell out. I didn't say it wouldn't. That's not the that that wasn't my point. My point is I don't understand its purpose. Yeah, it's nobody like, does. They need to yeah. have it though. What is my purpose? <laughs> the design of it, I don't know. Like it's literally they put a screen in between the two halves of a PlayStation controller. Like all it, done, solved it. Yeah, it's so weird looking. Mm-hmm. Does that feel good on your forearms and stuff? Like, I'm sure. I mean, it it has to feel better than a switch. When I'm playing a switch, like just how flat that is and how small the buttons are, it's like I can only play so much switch uh, in handheld yeah, mode. Yeah. But this, I I guess you could play this all day all day long until the batteries in your house. Out. In your house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you plug it in probably. Maybe. But... Maybe your neighbor's yard, if they're if well, like I'm sure enough. I'm sure you can stream to it elsewhere. It's just your experience probably isn't guaranteed. Similar I mean, to like streaming like to your Xbox from a different location, right? Like right. you can do it. It's just you might. It's not going to be a stable experience. Yes, um, a, a few people wrote in, including "What if it ends?" Just basically letting us know about Pluto on Netflix. It was just like a new anime that people seem to really be enjoying. Mickey Mouse's um, dog? I thought I thought no. you were talking about the network. No, like, no, it's already its, its own app. Why would I put it on it's, in Netflix? It's uh, no, 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 no. It's some. It's how I thing. watch Mystery si- Series three thousand, Mystery Science Theater three thousand on Pluto, the Pluto Channel. I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah, uh, he's, he was also thing. is asking you, Wombat, if you're still playing Diablo four. Uh, I did check out season two. Yeah, that's what he's Diablo. asking. Diablo. Yep. Yeah, I started a new character. Um, actually, after two characters, I'm like, you know, I'm going to go back to the my original type character. I my first Barbarian in Diablo 4. I checked it out. It's fine. It's, I mean, it still feels like more Diablo. And I think, you know, this is where, for me at least, the season pass style doesn't work in a game like Diablo. I think part of the charm of a Diablo game and and games like it is that when you get gear that impacts your character and how your character plays, not just how they look, where in the season pass, all the rewards are just cosmetic. 
you're just hitting a button and it, you know, it transmogs what you currently, what you like the thing you earned. And to me, that's not fun. Like how, how'd you get that cool helmet? Oh, I unlocked it in the season pass is not as interesting as where'd you, how'd you get that cool helmet? Oh, I killed this dragon in this cave and this helmet gives me plus five, this and plus four that. And it's really awesome, isn't it? And that's a very different thing. And the seasons, the season stuff just doesn't do that. It's just like, oh yeah, I look like this now because I look like this now, but it doesn't. That actually makes sense because the whole real draw of Diablo is the the finding random loot in chests. Yeah. And now the root, the loot is not random. The reward is not a random uh, reward. No. And it's not found in a chest. It's presented it's... as from. I guess completing something and it doesn't work. I mean, maybe it works for some people, but I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb and say, Nope, it just doesn't work. It defeats the core concept of what Diablo is. Right. They're better off almost maybe. I mean, I don't know what they do. Maybe they do this, but it seems like they'd be better off making like a seasonal dungeon or something that's only available. hundred percent. Something like that. You can yeah. find the loot. The loot's only available randomly in that dungeon. Maybe that you find thing, it, maybe and, you don't, whatever. Or, or, or you're guaranteed to find something that works with your character, but we don't know what it's going to be. I don't know. There's something. 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 All, right. All right. We solved that one. Yep. Um... I think that's it. I think we made it to Sounds the good. end here. Um, yeah, thanks for watching us uh, on our new platforms. So uh, if you're just listening to us here and you have some pro you had some problem with Twitch, you didn't want to watch us on Twitch, well, come on YouTube or anywhere else. All right, we'll see you next week. Bird done.